I'm Jeff Ostraus, Technical Seed of Agronomist for Cropland. I'm in a beautiful field of corn and soybeans here today in Wisconsin. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk with you about temperature inversions and what effects or impacts temperature inversions can have on certain herbicide applications. Now oftentimes the challenge of describing or knowing when conditions are favorable for an inversion is that it's not easily seen with the naked eye. So I'm going to go through a demonstration here today out in the field with a sprayer and some smoke bombs to try to identify and showcase to you when conditions are favorable and just what a temperature inversion does look like, as well as explain its impacts on certain herbicide families. This figure shows what an inversion looks like compared to normal atmospheric conditions. Now the normal atmospheric conditions are highlighted in the top of this figure, where you have cooler air layered over cool air layered over warm air. Now this warm air, as it rises, will mix and dissipate smoke, vapors, or any fine particles into the upper atmosphere. Now the bottom figure shows what an inversion looks like, where you have a layer of warm air trapped in between two layers of cool air. Typically you see this happen in a valley. Now the inability for warm air to rise and mix any smoke, vapor, or particulates into the upper atmosphere traps it similar to what you would see with fog in a valley or any low areas of a field. That is what an inversion looks like. This demonstration highlights wind speed and its effects on the dissipation of drift or vapor simulated through the use of smoke bombs out on the tip of the sprayer boom. Now on the top half of the screen you see a wind speed of 3.8 miles per hour. And the bottom half of the screen was two tenths of a mile per hour or nearly still. And if you notice, the purple smoke on the top half of the screen not only does it move out of view faster, but it also mixes upwards and into the atmosphere more so than the orange smoke on the bottom of the screen. While the bottom screen with the orange smoke, that does seem to linger over the field longer. This smoke would simulate any driftable fines or volatilization of chemistry. So where does the smoke go? Now if we look behind the sprayer here, you'll see that orange cloud slowly drift out of the bean field, over the field road, and over into the adjoining cornfield. Now we're going to speed this up for the sake of time to 5x, and you'll see that orange cloud continues to move across the cornfield, but never really lifts up into the atmosphere to mix and dissipate. Instead it crawls over the hill, down into the valley, and migrates right down into the heart of the valley here as we approach the tree line. This demonstration shows the fate of any driftable fines and or chemical volatilization that may occur from a field when an application is made around sunset with nearly still wind speeds. So as we look at this figure again, you can see the difference between a trapped layer of warm air in between layers of cool air creates the conditions favorable for an inversion, which puts your driftable fines as well as any chemical volatilization at risk for off-site movement.